from somewhere in Hollywood. It's the, 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 the Tom Micah Show. Oh, my God. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We hear the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right wing whacker or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. 1 800 5 800 Tom. 1 800 5 800 8 Six, six. Thank you for tuning again. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. Oh, oh, oh boy. I have a conversation I'm going to have with you that is based on a conversation I have with somebody I know, and I won't name this person or embarrass this person in any way because we're talking about somebody who's a perfectly nice person. And does not deserve to be humiliated in any way. And I certainly am not going to do that. Because uh, this doesn't just apply to this one person. It applies to millions of women. Millions of them. There's no one woman this happens with. So even though I had a conversation uh, personally with one particular woman about this... Trust me when I tell you, she's not the only one. She's just like lots of other women. And I don't mean that in a derogatory sense. I just mean that she is the norm, and anybody who acts differently is the uh, the exception to the rule. Here it is. And again, without being specific to any one person. As someone who is unmarried... Happily, happily living alone, happily child-free by design, happily affluent as a result of not having to pay for preschools, Montessori schools, clothing for other people, handbags for other people, car loans for other people, other people's delinquent student loans without having to have a uh, a much larger house to house more people, living um, just an amazingly uh, affluent lifestyle and uh, enjoying all my travel. By the way, my next trip, I've rented a villa in Costa Rica. It's got five bedrooms. I'm not going to need five. <laughs> I'm just getting a different view every day. Middle of the jungle, Costa Rica. That's my next trip. You know, if you have kids, uh, your next trip is to Orlando. <laughs> That's where you're going. You know, I love my brother to death, and my nephew is just spectacular. He's seven years old. His name is Ryan, and I, I, I love this time of the year, and I, I, I love him. I'm crazy about them, okay? Well, my brother and I are different people. We're just different, and that's fine, because I, I love him the way he is, and I wouldn't want him to change. But uh, every year I try to surprise him for his birthday, and every year you know where he is? He's on a Walt Disney cruise with my nephew. I mean, I in my wildest dreams, I couldn't imagine doing that. You know, I'm going to the south of France, and I'm in London, and I'm in Rome, and I'm in Tuscany, and Costa Rica in the jungle, and Cartagena, Colombia, and Spain, and you know the places I go. I'm always traveling somewhere. And uh, all that affluence is due to the fact that I don't have obligations or responsibilities. My biggest obligation is to come to work every day on time, 
speak English into this microphone for four hours, and then pay, pay all my bills. Save, invest. And other than that, wintertime, Southern California, we've already had, uh, you know, rain and cold, and I had a quart of a quart of firewood delivered to my home. I sit in front of the crackling fire and hear the raindrops falling outside. I drink a cup of espresso out of my $1,500 espresso maker. And I say to myself, you know, I don't think I'd be happier going to Orlando for the holidays. I just don't think I would. I wouldn't. So here is why... <laughs> I I wanted to come to you this hour with with this particular concept. I had a conversation with a friend of mine who was kind of waxing philosophical about her um, her love life, and not just her love life, but also the general topic of marriage and commitment. Where is all of that going? She would be such. A good wife, if only somebody would give her a chance. And by the way, I was one of the people who dated her, who has dated her. Okay, I, you know, and she's she's uh, you know in the vicinity of thirty years old, and she's well, I would just be such a good wife. I don't get it. Guys don't want commitment. Guys don't want to get married. You know, it's kind of like she's saying, I was born too late. You know, uh, the old days you got married and it meant something. You stayed together and, you know, now you date guys. They don't want commitment. Of course, I'm one of them. And I want to speak as a man for a moment. And, uh, you know, I'm a man who has done it all, been through it all, and I've made many mistakes. I haven't made all of them. I'm not paying anybody child support. So that's one mistake I did, 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 didn't make. But, um, yes, I've made a few mistakes along the way, and I believe I've learned from them. And among the mistakes I have made is I have been uh, sat down like I'm being sold a timeshare in Aspen or, or, or Maui. I have been sat down, and I have been told that it's uh, time to make a commitment of some kind, and I cracked under the pressure. And sign the contract and live to regret it like so many people buy those timers. <laughs> I have. Okay. And so I believe that now, having done that and having gone through that and having had that experience, I feel like I'm driving the bus. For the first time in my life, I'm driving the bus. I understand how things work now. And I'm still young enough to enjoy things, but I understand how things work. And then I try to tell all of you how things work. And here is one of the things I don't understand, and it's based on my own experience, ladies. Maybe some of you have dated me or dated guys like me. See if this sounds familiar to you. And again, I'm not naming any one individual or uh, telling you about the experiences I've had with any one individual. This is an experience I've had with many individual women. And I just don't understand this. All right, let's talk about you. There you are. Guys, see if you think this is familiar. You're, uh, you meet someone. She looks hot. You lust after her. You bang her. And it's pretty good, too. Good enough that uh, you would start banging her more often than you're banging the other people in the rotation. Then you find out some other things about her. She likes some of the things you like and isn't offended by the stuff that chicks usually get offended by. Okay? You like football? She likes football. You like uh, boating? She likes getting on your boat with you. You like smoking weed? She likes smoking weed. I mean, you know what I'm talking about. It could be any activity. It could be any of the things that women in the past gave you a hard time about. Maybe you like doing shots of tequila. And you're tired of women going, are you going to have a second shot? You already had one. 
I have found somebody who likes to throw back shots with you or somebody who likes going on vacation to the same kinds of places you like going on vacation, whatever. The point is, you, you look around and you say, this is pretty good. In fact, it's incredible. Hot chick, sex, good, times, fantastic. Um, and she's not even in your face every day. You know, she's got her own things to do. She's got her job or she's got her own responsibilities. So she's not in your face seven days a week. She's not sending you text messages every 10 minutes. She's not calling you constantly. So you're not feeling that usual pressure that you feel when chicks start to like you, they start ratcheting up the pressure. So you're not feeling it. You're having fun. Let me look back at times with women I've... Just to give you examples of things I've done, chicks like this, okay? Weekend at the beach in San Diego, right on the beach, eating sushi, drinking at a bar, looking at sunset, right on the sand, banging away. Go up for the weekend, go up north to Morro Bay, get a room at the end of Morro Bay. There's that, ever been to Morro Bay, California? They get that big rock there on the water and there are seals out there. You can see whales in the distance. Right? Go to restaurants, go away for the weekend, hang out there, light the fireplace, bang away. <laughs> Napa Valley, get yourself a room in Yountville or St. Helena or Calistoga or somewhere. Going to wineries by day, hitting the hot tub late in the afternoon, lighting the fireplace at night, banging away. You come back, you're listening to the ball game in the car. She's actually asking you who's winning, what's going on. She's into it. You're having a good time. How about the time I went with a chick? Oh, this was fantastic. I went with a chick, and she was absolutely wonderful. And we went to the Napa Valley together. I mean... <laughs> We're drinking shots. We're having sex six times a day, seven times a day. We're walking around to restaurants and drinking wine and acting stupid. And we're singing. And it's just all good. And the sex is constantly great. That's right, Dean. Sex in the swimming pool. Other people can hear. Banging away in the swimming pool. Who cares who hears it? Who cares who sees it? Who cares? All right. These are some of the things I've done with chicks. And it's all different women. And these are all fun things. And I'm saying, with each one of these women, I'm saying, this is great. How great is this? I mean, we're just having fun. And it's good. And life is good. And as far as I'm concerned, it could be like this. Far into the future. Who knows? Maybe forever, as long as I always feel the way I do today. And if I don't, well, then it shouldn't continue, right? Why is it that most... I know it's not all, dear. Don't be calling in here, please, if you're the exception to the rule. Why is it that most women in these situations feel compelled to ruin it? It starts slowly. The chick you've been having all that fun with. The chick you've been in Dodger Stadium with drinking beers. The chick you've been out on the beach with banging away. The chick you've been going on vacations with. The chick who's uh, been showing up at 2 in the morning when you need action. <laughs> the chick who uh, sits and... Uh, just have some stupid, dopey, impromptu candlelit dinner just because it's silly and fun. And she never wants your money and you're never spending anything. You're just having a great time. One day that same happy-go-lucky, carefree companion is sitting there in your living room, or in my case, you know, like on my, my sofa in my living room. I've had this conversation so many times. You look over, and she's got that look. You know the look I'm talking about? Here's how the dialogue goes. You've had this conversation. I know you have. Here's how the dialogue goes. Hey. What's the matter? Nothing. 
What are you thinking about? No, it's really nothing. Now, by the way, you've never had a fight. You've never had an argument. You've never insulted or offended her. She got all your jokes. The two of you were just living it up, and suddenly it's, no, really, it's nothing. And no, really, it's nothing. That goes on for a couple of weeks. The phone calls become less frequent. The long pregnant pauses on the phone become longer and more pregnant. And suddenly comes that day where she says to you, What are you doing tonight? Oh, nothing. Why? And you mind if I come over? I'm, I only need about an hour. Ever get that one? Like she's letting you know she's not staying over? <laughs> I only need an hour. Maybe less. Now, I've been around the block long enough to know what this is. But for those of you youngsters out there who don't know where this goes when you get that call, here's where it goes. She comes over to your place, and she sits down and she says, I have to ask you something. <laughs> Various phrasings on basically the same content. It goes like this. I just don't know where I stand with you. I didn't want to ask you about this. I thought I could be cool with this, but I can't. I have to know. Where is this going? What is this anyway? What am I to you? Am I your girlfriend? Am I your pal? Am I your booty call? You know, when I see your friends, you never introduce me as anything. I'm just sitting there, but we're playing pool and we're having fun. And you never say, like, you know, this is my sweetie or this is my girlfriend. You just, you just got to say, oh, this is Jennifer. You don't ever, like, actually, like, <laughs> you don't even, like, ever call me any sweet names or anything. You don't touch me with any warmth, you know. You just... I mean, we're just like kind of pals who have sex. And I thought I could do it. I thought I could just hang out with you, but I can't. I can't do it. This has to be going somewhere. It has to be going somewhere. And I keep coming over here and I keep doing whatever you want. And we have fun, but all the time I'm thinking, where is this going? What are we doing? Who am I to you? Am I your fiance? Am I just some chick you're effing? What am I? You've had that conversation, haven't you? You know the one I'm talking about. Now, here's what I don't understand. Ladies, maybe you can answer this question for me, because I know many of you have done this. It was all going so well, you're just having fun. You were having fun. Why is it necessary to have this conversation? Why is that necessary? I mean, look, if we wanted to marry you, we would have proposed to you. We don't want to get married. And maybe we don't want to get married to you. Maybe we don't want to have a commitment. Why is it necessary to have this conversation? You know what? Here's another way of looking at it. Why humiliate yourself? Why demean yourself? If you really feel that way, girls, why don't you just call up and say, I can't do this anymore? It's been very nice knowing you goodbye. And maintain your dignity. Why do you have to come over and make it into the big talk? We have to talk about this. Why do you come over to our house and say these things and then we have to have the talk? Why? Why? It was so much fun, and you girls have to have the talk. Why? Guys, can you relate to what I'm saying? Have you been in this position? Of course you have. Ladies, you've been the perpetrator. Why is it necessary to come in and have the talk and ruin all the fun? <laughs> 
Like this. Like this. 1 800 5800 Tom. What do you have against women? Nothing. My manhood, usually. It's the Tom Like His Show. The Tom Likas Show. God, I love standing here doing this show. I got to tell you, I love doing this show. 1-800-5-800-TOM is our telephone number. It's Maria on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi, Maria. Okay, so I'm dating a gentleman for many months now, and I've always felt that he's followed somebody's rules, but I couldn't pinpoint the rules he was following and now i finally discovered he follows your rules i'm figuring did he tell you that no he didn't but it was just the strangest thing i was in the car the other day my daughter was looking for a radio station for music she came across you she heard you just for a couple seconds and she commented that you your voice sounded just like this guy i know my voice sounds like him (laughs) yes and so i commented to the gentleman on this and he said, yes, that you remind him of himself. And that was just about the worst thing he could have said, because I've heard your radio station, your your show. And what is, what is it that he does that's like me? <laughs> okay, I wanted to ask you about some of these things. Okay, first of all, I went online to check out some of your rules, and you talked about how you should never hold a woman's purse. I did say that, yes. Okay. So one of our first dates, we went out on a date, and we're coming out of the restaurant. I realized I was freezing. I needed to put my sweater on, but it was cumbersome with my purse. So I I asked him, without, I wasn't testing him or anything. I was just asking him if he would please hold it while I put on my sweater. He absolutely refused to hold it, and it was just going to be for a couple of seconds. <laughs> That's a student of yours? Well, yes, I wouldn't hold a purse. Because here's the thing, dear. What would you do if you were at the restaurant alone and then you came outside and you needed to put your sweater on? Right. I would have had to put my purse down. I had to do. I had to search for somewhere to put my do that. However, there was a gentleman I thought with me, and he could have just provided that for two seconds. I would no, not. No, it looks that. very uh, looks very pussy whipped. Uh, I tell guys, do not hold the purse. Wow. So I, that made me so angry. I almost didn't go out with him a second time. But as I tell guys, when they get angry, they get fascinated and intrigued because most guys are pushovers and will do whatever they're told. And so you got angry, but you continued to see him, which is what I tell the guys will happen. But I just want someone who's going to be a gentleman with me also. Well, you say that, but the guy did not do what you thought was gentlemanly, and you continued to see him anyway, thus proving my point. (sighs) Okay, I need to ask you. Okay, do all guys really know that it bugs women when they complain about their financial problems? We don't talk about that. Well, you see, and if a guy does talk to us about it, don't they automatically know that we don't like that? that it's bothersome when we hear them complaining about their financial difficulties. Well, I you see, now that would be the opposite of something I would recommend because if I would say if you have financial difficulties, hide them. Okay. Because women want us for our money and uh, at the very least for being protectors or whatever they call us. Uh, so you don't want to appear like your life is uh, spiraling out of control. Okay, so how would you decipher that language if suddenly, okay, December was approaching and we're talking about New Year's plans and so forth, then he starts talking about all the difficulties he's having financially. Oh, okay, well, that makes sense. See, um, I wouldn't recommend doing it that way, but I tell the guys to disappear during the holidays. Right, I've read that, yes, unfortunately. Yes, because uh, that way, uh, if you're taking us seriously, Uh, New Year's Eve is definitely a dangerous night to be with a woman because if you are with her on New Year's Eve, she's going to think you care about her. Oh, 11 months now. No, no, no. (laughs) That's your perspective, dear. (laughs) It's his, too. We're exclusive. Yeah, but, (laughs) see, he might be exclusively having sex with you, but that doesn't mean he's going to marry you or move in with you or want you to move in with him. It just means he's having sex with you. That's it. 
Okay. And, and New Year's, you know, I, I'll tell you why. I don't want to go out New Year's Eve. Right. Uh, because it's costly. Uh, because any woman I go out with on New Year's Eve is going to think that she matters to me. Wow. Okay, he definitely wants to go out for New Year's, New Year's, New Year's but it was just, you know, what But he, does, he wants to do something really cheap. <laughs> yes. Uh-huh. Yeah, well, I mean, I recommend he not go out with you at all on New Year's Eve, that he tell you uh, he's got a cold or his family needs him or... Well, I wanted to do something really romantic. I thought it would be very romantic to do something very special. But, but that's what I want him not to do, because if he does something romantic with you, you're going to think this is going to go to the next step, whatever that is. Okay. Another thing that I think might be one of your rules is I've always um, felt that there's a lack of communication as far as phoning each other. So I notice, and I will always wait for him to call. And so I notice he doesn't call every day. I would just think that a man who's smitten by a lady, just completely head over heels. He's not smitten. He's smitten with your vagina. (laughs) I think he would want to talk to me every night. No, he doesn't want to hear you talking at all. (laughs) You're laughing. I'm yeah. trying to say it to you in a funny way because I'm, I, I'm trying to to soften the blow on you, dear. You didn't do anything to hurt me, but the reality is he doesn't want to hear you talk. Okay. Wow, that's powerful. I mean, calling you and having to listen to you talk about your day is painful. <laughs> oh no. He, a little phone sex, he wouldn't mind. Uh-huh. But talking about your day or. Talking about your kids or talking about your ex or talking about your neighbor or somebody at work that bothered you? He didn't want to hear that. So when they call every two days or so, that's pretty much right along with what you... That's just basic level of maintenance. Oh, my goodness. Wow. And even then, he'd like to keep it short and sweet, I'll bet. Do you teach... Do you teach... I, well, put it this way. I tell the guys, your main concern is getting what you came for. Oh, my goodness, Tom. This is horrible. This is not romantic. This is not gentlemanly. This is, uh, this my is show gentleman. is not a romantic, gentlemanly show. It's teaching guys how to get laid. Okay. So how do we find those romantic guys out there, and how do we know before we even go on a date with them that they are the romantic type? Because well, that's... if you ever meet a man who listens to Coast or My FM. Oh, or star. If you ever meet a man who's seen Wicked or Phantom of the Opera, Hairspray, or any man who's ever been to Cirque du Soleil. Of course, those guys are probably gay. But if they're not gay, you've hit the jackpot. I'm not sure if I'm surprised by your comment on the no floor foreplay because I would also think that he would want as much enjoyment as the lady also. No, no. He wants enjoyment for himself. Why so, would foreplay be enjoyable for him? So when they're not doing foreplay, they know already that women want that, right? All men know that. Well, whether they know it or not, they don't care. Well. You see, the guys who care about that are the guys who marry you. Or want to marry you. Wow. Okay. But my awesome. students are not those kinds of people. Uh huh. We don't want to get married. We don't want to be with you on New Year's Eve. And if we are, we don't want to spend $160 a couple to go to a hotel somewhere. Right. We don't want to do it. Okay. And, and by the way, dear. Uh, part of the problem is you, because you give him the benefit of the doubt. Right. Right. I do. You impart qualities to him that Prince Charming has, right. and you're hoping this is him. Right. But it's not. He's a guy who wants to get laid, and because, you're available. Because, and I always did that because I thought, oh, he just doesn't know. Or, oh, no, no. Or, I know, mean, he, he, he just know doesn't. Me. Not knowing and not caring are two completely different things. Okay, so how do I know whether he knows or he doesn't care? How do Sorry, I... I? I see you. You're 39 and he's 41. Believe me. By 41, if he doesn't know, you're never going to teach him. Right, okay. That's clear. You're right. So if he doesn't know or he doesn't do it, it's because he doesn't care. And if he doesn't care, well, it is what it is. 
Right. But here's the beauty part for guys. I, I Let me tell it to you from my point of view. I, I have created, and I told this much to the frustration of a female caller recently, I've created the perfect crime. I meet women, and they hear me saying what a jerk and an a-hole I am. Then they say to me, you can't possibly be like that. You're just a big teddy bear. All right. Don't I listen. say nothing. Mm -hmm. Then the situation continues. I'm banging away. They're doing whatever I ask. I don't call for days at a time. Right. I resurface. They don't know why I haven't called. Uh, after a while, they figure out I really am a jerk. Right. Oh, no. And then I say, when did I ever say otherwise? You're right. the one who said that I'm imbued with these qualities. Right. We want to believe that those qualities are there. We well, not only that, women have this inherent belief that they are their mere vagina is going to change us, even if we are unfeeling, uncaring jerks, that, you know, like Florence Nightingale, you're going to nurse us to health and we're going to become these caring, sensitive individuals who want to go see Wicked. Right. Right? And when in reality, uh, <laughs> we are who we are when you meet us. That's true. And it doesn't change. Wow, okay. On top of that, dear, many times women meet us and they come to our sloppy, filthy, disgusting homes. <gasps> okay, yes. Yeah. Talk about that. Okay. Talk, talk. You come in and oh you God. see the stuff. First of all, you see the guy's got nothing in his refrigerator. And nothing, nothing in the cupboard. And he barely has, like, a pot or a pan. Like, he doesn't have a complete set of anything. Knives, forks, spoons. I mean, you can tell this guy eats off a spork most nights of the week. Right. Yeah, and then you look around. He's got his clothes all over the place. He's got his shoes all over the place. He's got his socks all over the place. He hasn't changed the sheets on his bed in three months. So you come in there and you go, you know what? <laughs> I'm going to help this guy out. Right. I'm going to cook. I'm going to get him some, some Tupperware. I'm going to clean up around here. It's so cute, you know. I mean, you know, I guess he just works so hard. He doesn't have time to take care of the place. Mm -mm -mm. Right. And so you come in and you start doing all this stuff. And he's uh, just like kind of grooving on the fact that you're coming and doing this stuff. Later on, maybe 11 months into the situation, you start going, you are such a slob. Don't you ever go to the grocery store? Don't you ever shop? Don't you ever make your bed? The stuff you thought was cute when you met him and you just wanted to mother him, now you rip him for it. Okay, so Tom, since you touched on that subject, okay, yes, yeah, so the bathroom's a complete mess. Right. And I go and I don't clean or anything, but the guy knows, right? The guy knows that it's a mess and that he should want to clean it up because what? a lady will be visiting. No. It's, why that? should he want that? He didn't want it before. Why does he want it now? Okay, so the other guy who you're talking you about... You accepted him this way, okay, but and now you expect your vagina to magically change him. <laughs> okay, but the guy who will go see Wicked, the gentleman, he would clean it up, right? Because a lady is going to visit. He would, but he also probably has, uh, yeah, you know, uh, some uh, male friends uh, with a bandana hanging out the back of their pocket. You know what I'm talking about? Right. So the gentleman who doesn't clean up the bathroom just basically doesn't care. He realizes that a woman visiting would like it cleaner, but he just doesn't care. If, if you like it cleaner, clean it. <laughs> but you didn't. You see, you accepted him the way he was. Because I thought, just like these girls out there, oh, my gosh, I'm so sorry to say, yes. I thought, well, with seeing me enough times, he'll start cleaning that bathroom. Wrong. And it'll look nice for he him. He will always be the same. He is who you met. You're right. You're right. And he will always be the man you met. Right. And you had no right to believe he would ever be anything else. Right. Because, as I always tell guys, vaginas are not precious. More than half the world has them. <laughs> oh, no. Where there's, <laughs> there's more where that one came from. Mm -hmm. And so, but, but we're never going to change because of the presence of a vagina. And women are delusional. They think the mere appearance of, 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 of their private parts is going to make us different somehow. Or just the quality of woman we are. That's how I feel. The quality, because I know I'm a, I'm a very good, 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 good quality woman to have. I know that for a fact. 
and I just felt that maybe, again, this is delusional, but I felt that maybe the quality of women he's had in the past didn't hold him up to such high standards. But that's the point. You you are projecting your standards right. onto him. You're right. You're right. And that's exactly what I did. I thought I could be the one to see that he should hold higher standards. Right. But the, guess what? He, he The standards he has are the standards you met. You're right. Oh, my gosh. No, that's not good for me, then. That's how it is. You're right. So, you see, if you were thinking and not delusional, uh, if this was a problem for you, you would have dumped him when you met him. Mm -hmm. But you didn't because you thought you were going to heal him with vagina power. Or just my character. Or both. Mm -hmm. Just my character. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. You enlightened me. So women will tell me, well, if you don't change, I'm out. And I'm like, is that a threat or a promise? Right. So the perfect crime continues. But that's what's so confusing is he really does, on some level, seem very interested in me. He really likes He's my interested company. in seeing you with your clothes off, for God's sake. What do you say, Tom Likas? This is your main man from way back in the day, Cheese Steak Out, wishing you... A uh, happy holiday and Merry Christmas. Well, oh, excuse me, Tom. We don't wish atheists Merry Christmas, right? Happy holidays. And and as we say in Italian, Chindan in the new year of 08. The Chindan in Italian means uh, 100 years healthy, big guy. All the best to you. Keep up the good work to the young whippersnappers. It's the Tom Likas Show. 1-800-5800-TOM. That is our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. It's Liz on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. Boy, that was a long wait. <laughs> That's, uh, guess what? Nobody wants to eat in an empty restaurant there. <laughs> so I have a theory. I'm, I'm certain that, you know, a small percentage of the time it's some sinister premeditated plan on the woman's part. But nine times out of ten, it's called a biological clock. Yeah, but the point is, you know, why not just come in and say, all right, I need a sperm donor. So if you're not in for that, uh, I'm agree. moving on. <laughs> I agree. But I'm, I just have a theory that it's a hormonal imbalance. And then once that's over with and people wake up from a fog, they think, oh, my God, what was I thinking? Because you could save yourself all the humiliation, save your dignity. You know, why get into a situation with a guy where you're having a good time, banging around, watching the ball game, drinking, well, I, smoking weed, having fun, whatever you do? I can't answer that for you. I wouldn't do that, but my favorite. And then is, you have that one, nothing. What's about nothing? Come on, tell me. Nothing. What are you thinking about? Nothing. Uh, you know, I don't have an answer. I agree with you wholeheartedly. Ladies, you are embarrassing yourselves with that, 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 that conversation. Nothing. <laughs> so, Tom, on another note, I got to tell you, my 16-year-old daughter and I love your show. We think it's fun, and she calls you Tom Likes Us. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> my husband, not so much. <laughs> oh, is that so? Yeah. Well, you'll be gone from there in no time flat. <laughs> and then I've got an open palm with your name on it anytime you're ready, Liz. Okie doke. <laughs> Well, that's all I got for you, Tom. Thank you, dear. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Chris on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. How you doing, Tom? I'm great. I was listening to one of your callers about 10 minutes ago, and she asked you um, where you could find these, these gentlemen, these respectful guys. And then you went through a little scenario, and you said, you know, to find a guy that enjoys uh, the play Wicked or Fan of the Opera. And that immediately struck my attention because I've seen both of those plays. Uh huh. I started freaking out. And then you went to Hairspray, and I was like, oh, my God, I've seen that one, too. And and then you did it with uh, Cirque du Soleil, and, and I just went, oh, my God, I've just batted 1,000. I went four for four right now. And uh, this is terrible. And then you went to the gay thing, and I'm not gay. I've, I've got a girlfriend. Well, I'll be uh, I'll be uh, dedicating a song to you. I love songs on the coast tonight. Be listening. Tom like his show.